Hello, this is Joe with Joe'sAstrophoto.com. Today we're going to be doing a little bit of reprocessing. So recently a viewer of mine asked if I could image the Iris Nebula and show how I processed it. And I would love nothing more than to do that, except that the clouds have rolled in and they're not going anywhere. It did get me thinking, however, that I did have some data on the Iris Nebula from about a year ago, and I thought I'd take a look at it. And when I did look at it, I didn't like what I saw, and I thought, hey, can I do this better? So we're going to jump into some Pixinsight editing and see if we could do things a little bit differently than I did a year ago. Here's the image that I took last year that, and I processed uh, quick and dirty. I didn't really like this image uh, that I took. I didn't get enough time and my subs weren't long enough to capture uh, as much dust as I wanted it to capture. So I think that because it, you know, it wasn't really up to what, where I wanted it to be, that I didn't put a lot of love into the into the post-processing of it and so what I got was kind of a big mess here in, in the center um, there's really no detail at all and it, it's, it's just a blob of white and so when I when I saw it um, a couple days ago I thought I could really improve on this and so I, I just wanted to show you real quick what I've done and I'll let you be the judge on if uh, you like it better or not so here's my combined image uh, from the red, green, and blue channels only, and I've left the luminance out for now. And I've went ahead and done a few things, but I wanted to show you what the image looks like. And I also wanted to share that you could do this with a one-shot color camera as well. If you had taken this in one-shot color, then you would be starting pretty much here uh, after you've stretched it. And I did some um, curves transformations so that um, I could bring out a little bit more color in the in the center here and so I'm just gonna redo those and uh, then I did a convolution and to make it blend and, and be pretty blurry and so now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to um, apply our luminance layer over the top of of our image so we'll go to uh, lrgb and we'll just put the luminance layer real quick in here we'll turn off rgb we're gonna apply the chrominance and we'll apply these this to the image and this should bring out a lot of detail as it is because of the luminance layer and um, changing some of the curves transformation have put some separation in the center compared to the old image and we'll look at that here in a second um, so this came out pretty good still getting a little bit of dust just not as much as i would have liked and we could look at um, the old image and i think it's already looking better um, so far than, than the old one especially here in the center and it looks a little bit more uh, true to life color so to speak as opposed to the um, more reds that are in this one as well so now here's really what i wanted to show you in the tutorial and that's mostly the um, hdr multi-scale transform tool <clears throat> and i like to do this this is something that you do after you have your uh, stretched image you, you don't do this in linear form and really it's supposed to be made to um, combine uh, HDR images where um, you'd have the center of a galaxy or uh, a nebula blown out in order to get the rest of the stuff so I guess this isn't much different because you want to take a longer exposure to get more of the dust except in my case I really didn't get a lot of the dust um, I didn't take long enough sub exposures so I usually um, click to lightness and lightness mask and what that does is kind of protects the the background from from get being affected and then on the number of layers 
<clears throat> it really goes from five to eight that are usable numbers of layers. And I'm usually applying six. Now, the lower the, the number of layers are, the more aggressive it's going to act. So if um, six doesn't work, then I could undo what we've done and, and try seven. Um, but six usually does the trick for me. Um, I don't normally use previews because I have a really fast computer and as you can see it's already completed and it's really brought out a lot of detail. So let's just zoom in here and you could see that uh, it's, it's taken a lot of this and you could start to see the detail um, in the dust clouds around here. So it looks pretty good. Uh, I think what I really want to do now um, is bring this over to Photoshop and do a few more little tweaks. So let's jump over there real fast. We're here in Photoshop and really what I wanted to do is just, um, first of all, just give it a little bit of a crop. I wanna keep some of the dust, but I wanna get rid of some of these dark edges around the side where um, it doesn't look like the, the dynamic background extraction didn't get everything. And um, now that the the iris nebula itself has a little bit more detail I'd like to bring that out a little bit more as well so I think we'll that, that's fine the way it is right here we're gonna do a quick duplicate layer in case we screw up I could just delete the layer we're gonna go into the filter and camera raw filter and I'm just gonna make a few adjustments um, what I'd like to do is bring the texture up just a little bit and clarity a little bit as well you can see a difference um, as I drastically move the slider around um, but I think that does it just about right there um, I'm gonna turn the blacks down just a little bit more Now, doing that's gonna remove some of the lighter dust areas but I think it'll bring a little bit more contrast to the image and uh, it moving the contrast slider changes the the dust clouds a little too much so I think we're gonna um, leave that alone and we're gonna take the highlights down just a little as well um, you can see that it'll um, tone down the stars a little bit the big bright stars give them a little bit more clarity if we bring the shadows up you'll get more dust but it brightens up the image too much and if we lower it we lose dust so I am going to lower it but just by about five. And then if we bring the whites up, we make everything just a little bit brighter. And I don't want much, but I think I'm going to bring that up to about seven, like that. And I think that'll do it. That's really all I need. It was just a small little touch, but as you could see when it flashed back, that it's, uh, it made a little bit of difference. Here they are side by side. The one on the right is the one that we did today and the one on the left is the one that I did last year. Um, overall I prefer the one on the right only because it has a lot more detail. Um, the one on the left I guess just left me wanting. Um, the colors are a little washed out and there's not a whole lot of detail in the Iris Nebula itself. The only thing that I like more um, about the one that I did last year is that I was able to get a lot more of that dust to come through. And I think that's where my focus was when I did it. Um, both of these um, have a lot more stars than I would normally like to see in one of my photos. Um, I was using the um, 1600mm Pro when I took these images and I just didn't give enough um, thought at the time I was taking the data as to the exposure and I don't know where the moon was and how bright it was and maybe that's why my um, color exposures weren't a little higher and my luminance exposures should have been a little lower uh, I should have been shooting at about 60 second luminance and 120 second uh, RGB and what I did was just shoot 90 seconds across the board and, and I don't remember why uh, I hope you found that short tutorial on the HDR multi-scale transform helpful? If so, please smash that like button and we'll see you in the next video.